Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. If you remember a few videos back, I uh, showed you guys these bearded hatchets that I messed up. They all have this cold shut here in the front of the eye, which in my opinion, for the work that I do, that's not good enough to sell. That's not the kind of stuff that I am going to put out there. So I basically scrapped these and started over and we've since completed the, uh, the new ones and those are already gone. But these have been sitting on the forge cart ever since. They've had multiple suggestions about how to salvage or repurpose these and a couple of them have been you know, running a, a welding bead through this uh, cold shut here and grinding it up clean and everything. And I, it's not that I'm concerned that it wouldn't hold up because I'm sure it would. It would hold up like this too, but that's not really the point. And so, you know, another, another other suggestions were to sell these as unusable blemish, blemished product or whatever. Um, the only thing wrong with these is the aesthetic fact, factor of, of these cold shuts here. So I have another idea. We're going to try to salvage these to make them, you know, make them work as hatchets, but take away this aesthetic problem here and uh, maybe get these to where they're, you know, good as new. Okay, well, we've got one of those heating up in the forge. I'm going to show you what my plan is. So, essentially, the problem is that the eye was forged out too large during the process of squishing the bit, you know, forging the bit out and forming the eye, just different things like that. And then it's closed back up to create this cold shut, and then the final drift size is only this big. And obviously, it opened that cold shut up a little bit, but it didn't. Uh, doesn't account for the rest of the eye and so that's that's the problem if that makes sense so my plan is to try to go ahead and use this entire um, this entire what's the word uh, space that we we actually made for the eye so it's gonna be a big long eye essentially now <clears throat> I don't know how well that's gonna work or how that's gonna look probably not something that I would do routinely but if we can make this work we can save these hatchets and make a good product still so we're going to try it. The way I'm going to do that hopefully is by using a drift. Now obviously this drift is not going to make that you know part of the eye. It's not going to spread that out. I really don't want to make a whole new drift just for these so we're going to use this drift in conjunction with a half inch rod as a spacer and hopefully we can uh, accomplish the same thing. So that remains to be seen. And let's see what we can do. So the problem is pretty obvious. You know, this uh, in theory was kind of working, but uh, these two round surfaces were slipping off of each other and not working in that regard. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do a temporary modification. <clears throat> Go ahead and tack these two pieces together. I should be able to, you know cut that off and, and re just dress up the drift after the fact so we're not doing any permanent any permanent damage here
not, that's almost not even quite enough right there. I mean, we really, uh, really opened that up, but it's, uh, you know, it's different from, from here to the other side. It's like this side looks pretty good, but then we still have, it's kind of at an angle, so that's kind of crazy. And then, uh, gonna have to do something with this bit, obviously. Okay, so we've basically accomplished what uh, what we set out to do here, and this is all this is workable. I'm, you know, what I'm going to do here is make some throwing axes, actually, some throwing hatchets, and uh, we we can work with all this. But the next thing we need to do is fix this bit problem here. It's it's uh, turning down too much. It needs to come back the other way, and I think I'm even going to forge out the toe a little bit more to make it more conducive to sticking in, in your target like a throwing hatchet needs to do. And so I'm going to try to do it this way and use the torch for isolated heat uh, instead of having to make some uh, fancy dies for the press that would, you know, I mean it wouldn't take too long but I'm trying to keep this as quick and simple as possible. So let's see if we can just heat right here and torque this over. Well, that's taking way too long, so I'm going to throw this in the forge. We're going to do it that way. To it securely enough to put enough pressure to bend that that bit you know up so I'm gonna have to try something on the press here which uh, really runs a risk of messing up the eye again or even further and we've already corrected it once so I'm, I'm afraid that you know if we mess it up on the press again that's kind of gonna be it so sort of like a last chance go on this on this uh, fix here but I don't know what else to do so uh, Give it a shot.
Well, I think that was successful enough to move forward. I'm going to go ahead and normalize them now. I've got three in there in the forge right now heating up. We'll run them through a couple of cycles, and I'm going to go ahead and heat treat these like throwing axes. So we'll just uh, we'll just harden the bit or the you know the edge about uh, an inch back, something like that, and uh, we'll kind of speed that process up a little bit. We'll uh, kind of purpose them for throwing and keep the cost down a little bit more. So let's. Uh, Let's carry on. It's a rare treat to be able to observe a flock of bearded hatchet heads in the natural habitat. Here they are hanging about after having a bath in the oil. So I've got these all hardened, ready for the temper, and we'll get them cleaned up on the grinder and really close to being finished, which will be tomorrow, but of course in YouTube land that's about two seconds. So these are looking kind of nifty. I actually went ahead and did a final tempering cycle on them in the kiln. I actually don't really ever do final tempering just with the toaster oven because it doesn't get hot enough really to reach a target temperature for stuff like this. So these are ready to go now. I just need to uh, just need to wire brush them off and then clean up the eye a little bit with the die grinder. And then Justin uh, roughed out a uh, test handle for us here with <laughs> A lot of extra material up here at the eye, depth-wise or length-wise, whatever you want to call it. And so, we'll get one of these cleaned up and uh, fit this handle and see, see what we can do here. Alright guys, well, we got something here. Um, I kinda actually, I kind of like how this turned out. It looks very sort of Nordic or Finnish, I'm not sure, but I'm not going to say that I had an epiphany that I've been making the eyes too short this whole time, but I think it works for this uh, little batch here, and I think it'll make a great little throwing axe. 
So what do you guys think? Should we have Justin knock out the other four handles? Justin, they like it. More handles. Okay. Well, overall, I think it was a success. Even put in some uh, relief here, like throwing some throwing axes have, so it sticks better. Anyway, pretty cool. And we'll get those other four, have those ready as soon as possible. But before we finish the video, of course, we need to go throw this and see how it performs. Necessary part of the job. So as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. And uh, stay tuned for the axe throwing.